Welcome to the Big Four Accounting Firms podcast, brought to you by BigFourAccountingFirms.com. Today's podcast, we're going to be talking about all the Big Four Accounting Firms canceling Russia, and it's happened over the past couple of days. It took a while for all of them to do it, but as of today, March 8th, they've all said that they're going to leave the Russian market, and Deloitte was the last one, EY and Deloitte, but Deloitte was the last one. PwC was the first firm to talk about this, and they spoke about how they were, the Russian member firm was going to be leaving the global network. After Bob Moritz released a statement, and the rest of the big four kind firms issued a similar statement, and Bob Moritz said, We all continue to be shocked and horrified by the senseless war that the Russian government is inflicting on Ukraine and its people as we galvanize to find ways in which we can help. Our main focus has been helping our Ukrainian colleagues and supporting the humanitarian efforts to aid the people of Ukraine. I am proud of how we have come together across our network to support those in need, donating money, taking colleagues and their families into homes, and reaching out with messages of support. But helping Ukrainian colleagues is just part of our responsibility. Last week, we set our position deploring Russian government's invasion of Ukraine. Since then, we have also been thinking about how we can take action in the way we run our network. We have decided that under the circumstances, PwC should not have a member firm in Russia, and consequently, PwC Russia will leave the network. As we implement this, we will maintain our focus on doing all we can to help our Ukrainian colleagues and support the humanitarian efforts to aid the people of Ukraine who have been devastated by the invasion. We are also committed to working with our colleagues at PwC Russia to undertake the orderly transition for the business and with a focus on the well-being of our 3,700 colleagues in PwC Russia. Ian Y said this about Russia. As a shocking and abhorrent war in Ukraine continues to escalate, our priority continues to be the safety of our people in Ukraine, Eastern Europe, and across the region, and actively supporting those impacted. We continue to support our 700 EY colleagues with financial support, relocation, transportation, and immigration services. In addition, the entire global EY family has come together over refugee support, including logistical assistance, volunteer work, and financial donations to the wider Ukrainian community. In light of the escalating war, the EY Global Organization will lo- no longer serve any Russian government clients, state-owned enterprises, or sanctioned entities, and individuals anywhere in the world. EY has commenced a restructuring of its Russian member firm to separate it from the global firm, global network. This is not something we take lightly. This is heartbreaking as we have over 4,700 colleagues in Russia. And KPMG had a similar statement, but they said they have 4,500 people in their member firms. So these the big four have anywhere between 3,000 to 5,000 employees, and they're all severing ties uh, with their Russian member firm. Um, and it, 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 they act like it's, we know the big four county firms are woke, and they act like, you know, we, we were really thinking about this. They didn't think about this. They waited till all the other corporations, major corporations in the world had done this, and then they just, came at the end of it and did the same thing as all the rest of them. And to the big four accounting firms, I think it was a big deal when people saw that PwC and KPMG did it. I saw some people retweeting and quote tweeting it. They were pretty big accounts. But they have to remember that the big four accounting firms aren't corporations. They're just a group of member firms and these member firms really just use the brand to get work. So the day-to-day for the Russian accounting firms will be pretty similar other than they have to reconfigure they can't use their brand and they're going to any benefits they're going to have to like migrate and so really what the big four accounting firms are doing here are really screwing their russian employees um i don't think it's really going to make a big impact on the russian economy because it's it's really the brand that these firms were using and they'll still provide the services but the big four accounting firms are global entities. They're part of, you know, this global chain of companies that all talk to each other. And I'm sure their clients, they, they don't want to have to go to a client and explain why they're still in Russia. That's another thing. Um, so they piggybacked on all these other companies and they have to do it because that's how they're going to win work. They're going to win work by virtue signaling that they care about the people when they really weren't, they weren't out front leading. They were one of the last companies to do this. And for them, it's a lot easier than a lot of other companies because again, it's just, as we speak about on this podcast a lot, a lot of these firms are just member firms, even in the U S like 
each there's a firm in each state and their member firms like they can separate if they wanted to um they're just using the brands uh using technology uh it, but I, I mean the main thing that, r- that the russian firms are going to lose is the branding they're going to have to come up with their own brands now they're going to have to disconnect from the technology that they use but they will probably get to keep their their client files unless they are working on a global client and then that will get pretty complicated for companies that are still in russia and use the big four accounting firms it's going to be very confusing and very complicated but i think what's going to happen there is that the big four accounting firms will still use those member firms they're just going to pay them a fee now uh that, that that's the way that they'll do it i mean that, that's basically how it works already because of the structure of the member firms so really, it's just disconnecting their brand from these Russian entities is what's happening. It's not anything. It's not anything crazy for a company. For a company to like completely shut down their Russian operations and divest of everything in Russia would be major. But that's not. That's not really what what's happening here. They're not like firing all their employees in Russia. They're just taking away their brand. But this is expected. There's no way the big four county firms could have after all these other companies have gotten out of Russia or halted their Russian operations, the big four accounting firms had to do this. But one thing that's going to impact is their global revenues. It's not going to be as picture perfect as it was before. And because of this whole conflict, oil is shooting up, everything is shooting up, except for the stock market, of course. So but I don't think people need to be as worried as they were during COVID because as we've said on this podcast before that there's been this great resignation and there's still a lot of work to be done. So I I don't know if they have to be worried about being laid off just yet. If this conflict gets worse and impacts the global economy even worse, which it looks like it will, then maybe, but I think that's probably a year or two down the road. But we just have to keep an eye on this. This is this whole conflict is is not just related to financial markets, um, oil markets. It's basically everything. So it's it's going to be we're going to have to keep an eye on this. This is probably the biggest issue out there right now. But uh, uh, the fact that the great there's been a great resignation before all this, I don't think people have to worry about losing their jobs yet, unless maybe you work in Russia or the area around Russia, maybe Ukraine also, because, I mean, there's going to be limited economic activity there for a while. But outside of those those immediate regions, um, it's, it's going to be, it's just going to take a while for this to ripple through, kind of like COVID did to the global supply chain. It took it a while. But this is obviously going to have an impact on a number of elements in the in the economy, uh, it it could, I mean, it's just going to have so many impacts. So there is a potential for layoffs at some point, but I don't think outside of that immediate region, it'll be anytime soon. That's the update for today. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast to stay up to date and check out the show notes for useful links.